Welcome y'all, it's Wes DIY Food Plot Pro. We're out in the alfalfa plot. We're getting ready to get her in. You can see the plot screen behind me. 12, 14 foot tall, looks really good. I've got my fertilizer. I went ahead and ordered a thousand pounds of 92330 this morning. I'm gonna spread on a few brassica plots, a few clover plots, and then this as well. This has already been fertilized this spring, but the issue is pea is not mobile in the soil. I would rather go ahead and get this down now because I'm about to chisel this ground, which means to work that ground. And when I chisel this, I'm gonna move that pea down to where it needs to be in the soil. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of extra. This is kind of for yearly maintenance. If I pulled a sample here right now, I'd be in good shape with P and K, but I want my P and K elevated to eliminate some of those feedings that might be a year or two away. So we've got the disc cooked up. We've had seven or eight inches of rain over the last three weeks or so. The ground's really packed down and it's just not drying super good. There's some places out here that are dry enough to chisel, but overall there's quite a bit that's just a little bit too wet. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the disc and I'm gonna scratch it open. The point of this is not to get this into a loose powder. It's not to try to disc it 10 inches deep. All I'm trying to do is bust open the very top get a little air and sunshine and dry that top level where I can come in with a chisel plow and chisel all this up. Okay, so we disc it, we let it air dry for two or three hours. Pretty windy today, so it didn't take very long. Now we're dragging a chisel plow through it. Now this is a great big chisel plow. That's for like a 200 horse tractor. That's obviously an 80 horse tractor. So it's not going to pull that like a 200 horse tractor would. The way I have to do it is I'll just chisel and chisel and I'll just keep kind of going down and down and down. I'm doing two things chiseling. I'm moving that P and K down into the root zone, more specifically the P because it's not mobile in the soil. And I'm also just getting a really good seed bed, a good loose solid seed bed where those alfalfa roots can get on down and get established really good for the cold weather hit. chiseling it about five times going over and making sure that I had that seed bed good and uh, ready for this alfalfa. I've got the disc out here now. I've already made a, a pass down through here and I basically I'm just packing this back down. When you think of a disc, you think of it loosens the ground. What you're really doing with the disc is packing that soil back down. You're making a lot of fluff on top, but down in there, you're packing everything back in. One thing with the disc that's worth noting, if you go too fast, it'll throw a hump in the middle. And you don't want that, obviously. One of the key reasons that I'm out here with this is packing, and then I'm trying to level this out for the drill. So I want this as smooth as can possibly get it. One thing that I did want to mention is I put between two and 3,000 pounds per acre of agricultural lime on this field several months ago. With alfalfa, you cannot mess around with the soil pH. Do not try this on a 5.0, 5.5. You have got to roll the lime to it and get that pH somewhere between 6.5 and 7. It's not like corn or beans. Do not try 
putting a bunch of products on here that claim that they are going to increase your pH, you need agricultural lime. This has to be right with alfalfa. All right, guys, got my bag of Roundup Ready alfalfa seed. You can see we got 65.84% pure seed, 34% uh, inert matter, which is coating material. This does have the inoculant on it already. So that makes up for some of that 34%. Um, and, but you see our germination rate is 70%. This is between 15 and 20 pounds per acre. And the coating is already figured into that, but this is figured at an 80% germ. So I need to add about 10% more to ensure that I've got enough seeds out there. I'm gonna to try to plant about 22 to 24 pounds per acre with this drill. We're drilling alfalfa. I got the soil district's drill, uh, 100 bucks for 10 acres. I've spent about probably 30, 45 minutes checking, making sure that everything's going as planned, making sure our seeding rate's good and our depth is good. We chiseled this, we chisel plowed this, I disc it four or five times, I took the tractor and I drove over and I packed it all back down. Alfalfa is very finicky about getting too deep. It's all, it's similar to clover, similar to brassica. So all I'm basically looking for is this seed just, I mean, just underneath the soil surface. You're gonna see seed on top of the ground. That's just all there is to it. If you're not seeing seed on top of the ground, you're planting it too deep. That's just all there is to it. These alfalfa seeds are absolutely tiny. So the best way is to raise the drill up and take the drive wheel and spin it. It's been a pretty good pile. It's purple seed, or my seed's purple, where you can see those piles. And that way you know exactly which rows are making sure each and every single row is planting. I found one that was not. When I went back and I looked at it, it had a little spider web that was built inside that seed tube. So everything was working, the seed was falling down, but as it was getting to the bottom, there was a little spider web and it was just strong enough that it was holding that alfalfa back. Be sure, stay vigilant when you're doing this. We do not want to do this again. We cannot plant into alfalfa after we do it the first time because of it has an auto toxicity. So what that means is we can't thicken this stand up later on. This is what we have for the next, hopefully four to five years is what we're planning right now. So take the time, do this right. You don't get a chance to do this next fall. One big thing that I wanna talk about, this ground's been chiseled and I'm using a no-till drill. Most of you say, what the heck? Why would you work that ground and then put a no-till drill behind it? A couple different reasons. Or the first reason is we've got lots of soil moisture right now but we don't have any rain in the two week forecast. But our soil conditions are perfect right now for drilling. Now for broadcasting on top, I would not be doing this. I would be waiting for a rain event. I can go ahead and get this in. We're still right in the center of when I wanna plant alfalfa in Kentucky, August 15th to September 15th. So we're right in the center. We're right here at the end. I think today is August 31st. The second reason that I chiseled this ground and then I'm using this no-till drill, you can get a thing called crown rot. Crown rot will show up a lot more in no-till fields planted in the fall. So if you are trying to steer clear of crown rot, which we all should, that's gonna cause your alfalfa stand to become less thick over time. We need to work the ground or we need to plant in the spring. Well, I don't like planting in the spring because in the spring, you, you get those on and off rain chances. I don't like doing that. Now, I may get burned this time in the fall, but typically I like the fall better for planting uh, alfalfa, not the spring. Crown rot is much worse in the fall than it is if you plant it in the spring. But I'm trying to do my best to mitigate that by chiseling this ground, working this ground. Hopefully that's not as much of an issue. Another thing that makes crown rot worse is the less amount of time that this alfalfa has to grow before killing freeze happens. So I've got lots of time right now. Basically, I'm the first of September. I've got probably 45 days minimum, maybe as much as 60 days of growth on this alfalfa before we start getting into a freeze. So some of them are really difficult to see because they are tiny little seeds. You see that purple right there? That's the alfalfa. We're obviously going through a little thin, I think this is an old salt lick is what this is from years ago. But if you come up here, it's a lot harder to actually see the seed, um, but you're just gonna have to trust me because I've, I've already climbed through all this several times looking to make sure that there's seed out here. You know, there's some right there. 
in a little bit of a harder spot. There's some more right there. We just basically just have it tucked on top of the ground and then the, these closing wheels are packing it back down. So on this drill that I've got, you've got different seeding boxes. You've got your big seed, oats, soybeans, winter wheat, and then you've got your front hopper, which is alfalfa. Open it up and you can see the purple inside there. There's a seeding chart right there. That's where you adjust that. You just move that left or right, any which way, and there's one on that side as well. Here's your ground drive. So if that's not spinning, you're not planting. But you can see all these little hoses right here, these are coming out of your small seed attachment, which is where my alfalfa is. The problem that I had earlier, this hose right here, dropping down and then there was a cobweb right in here. The first thing I did, I started at the bottom and I started pulling those hoses. When I didn't find any seed, I came up here, opened this hose up and that's when I found the cobweb. How this actually works, that meter turns up there, it drops seed in and then it comes right behind the double disc openers, it drops it out and then your closing wheel closes right behind it, basically presses it back down. guys we got the alfalfa plot whooped or it whooped us one of the two i don't know which everything looks pretty solid out here i like the way the drill doesn't leave all those tractor tracks in the field that'll be a little smoother a little cleaner for when we get ready to start mowing this stuff next summer uh, spraying it and everything else it leaves a good smooth seed bed so hopefully i think there's enough moisture in the soil right now that we will go ahead and start the germination process. One super quick tip for you before we end this alfalfa video. The best way to get seed out of these hoppers at the end, I'll see all these are full. I've got to get all these out. You can sit there and scoop and not get out. I've got brassicas to switch to. So I've got me a little battery powered shop back that I clean all my blinds out with. But thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Smash that like and subscribe button. 